Hey guys, it's Nicole. I'm back at the Goodwill Outlet. We're gonna go inside and hopefully find some things to resell on Poshmark. Let's go see what we can find. Also, welcome. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm a full-time reseller and the Goodwill Outlet is a pay by the pound store where you throw everything in your cart and then you weigh it. It's crazy. Let's go shopping. Here is a peek into what the actual outlet looks like. Look at these shorts I found. Love them. I love that lace up detail. I found some nice little premium Levi's. That's what I'm always looking for. Okay. Ooh, are these Miss Me's? I thought these were like Miss Me's or Rock Revivals, but they are not. <laughs> They're like total knockoffs. Okay, let's dig around. Uh, it is hard to dig and film at the same time, so I apologize in advance for that. Usually I'd be looking at every single piece, but I'm just giving you an overview. Okay, did we see anything good in this bin? Not really. This one's definitely been picked through. I do not pick up Cold Water Creek. Exceptions to every rule, but 99.9% .9 don't pick up. Old Navy, that's a no. Okay, here we go. Let's search into this bin over here, shall we? Does that look like a little Hannah Anderson, maybe? Little kid PJs? What are those? No, that was nothing I wanted. Just some random shirt. Um, okay, not really finding anything in this bin either. I see these waterproof rain pants, which I do like to pick up. Let's look at the condition. I'm going to go look at the bottom of these, and I can see that they're ripped and kind of muddy, so I'm leaving them behind. Always check the hems of pants. That's where you're going to find the most wear, the hems and in between the thighs. Uh, those are bras that I don't really want, probably like Vanity Fair or something along those lines. What is this? Nope. So yeah, this is what the bins really looks like. You're digging through a lot of trash. Okay, what did I find? These are things that I have put into my cart. Thought I'd show you guys some of the stuff. Lots of bras on this trip, which I was so excited for. Oh my gosh, I was losing my mind about all of the good bras that I found, which of course I will show you guys in a haul. There's a Lululemon sweatshirt. Look at this, look at this. All those bras all together, all really good brands. Very small haul today. This is everything I got at the bins this morning. It was only there a couple hours. I ended up spending, I think, right around $30. It was right at 25 pounds, like just over 25 pounds. I was worried that it wasn't going to hit 25 pounds. Um, but really like not a lot. I got this bag, which is pretty cool. This is a relic by Fossil. Uh, this Tweety Bird. Looney Tunes little tote bag. Lots of bras. I actually got about 20 bras in one bin. And they're all really good. They're probably all the same size too, a 30F. Oh my gosh, what a great size. <laughs> um, and, you know, this is like $25. So if there's 20 of them, that's about, what is that, $500 in bras alone. So that's fantastic. And then lots of jeans, lots of like little Y2K-ish pieces. We'll go through them in just a second. I also went to the bench yesterday and... Um, got about 60 pounds. I was there for about five hours. I did not film a haul from that. I was tired when I came back and I needed to start processing it because I wanted to take some of it to the local store that I sell at. And I was gonna do that today. Weather's really bad. I'm actually gonna drive out there tomorrow. So I will show you guys some of the haul I got yesterday. I'll show you some of this haul and I will show you what sold. I have a couple things to pack up and ship. My sales have been, ugh depressing you guys i didn't even clear a hundred dollars yesterday it happens it's not the end of the world but let's get to work let's get some stuff done my laundry room which has turned into my processing room these like baskets and stuff have been great from the bins this is drying i hung this to dry i got this yesterday it's a little carhartt girls jacket how cute is this had some smuts on it but it cleaned up pretty good um, lots of stuff for the local store that I sell at, some, like, patchwork jeans, some Y2K, like, lots of denim in here. Um, so that will go over there. Then we have some stuff that's just hand drying, this smart wool, little quarter zip, and then another smart wool 
women's shirt and these have no holes in them which is shocking um this free people piece with the cuffs these do pretty good these i stain treated and they fell on the ground <laughs> look at this nike white 550 down vest i am going to wash this up and then put it in the closet i started a winter closet i don't want to I used to say I'm going to list everything whenever, but I think like the heavier down stuff, the snow jackets, I'm going to wait until the end of the year to list these. So I am starting a pile and I know that I will be happy when I finally open up that pile. So there we go. This is a woman's medium. Um, but I did stay and treat that and I have to wash that today. A little Zara jacket. And then I have stuff in the dryer, as you can see. So anyway, I'm going to get this all sorted and organized, and I will show you some of the stuff that I got. Probably not the whole haul. Oh, wow. Okay. Sometimes I think, like, Nicole, you really got to work on your appearance for YouTube, but when you're wearing the bins and stuff, you're not trying to look fancy. So let's pull the stuff out of the dryer and see what we found, shall we? Uh, okay. Ta-da! This, oh, these are cool. This is like a rodeo shirt. Look at this. It's got like lightning bolts and cowboys and horses. This is a little Express Rider 100% cotton cowboy shirt. Could not leave this bad boy behind. How cool is that? So we got that. Um, these are Royal Bones. Uh, like, like a Trip NYC brand. Hold it Hot Topic. But they are the two-toned pants. They do have a little bit of like a bleach mark right here on them, but that's fine. Those will still be good. We have this red tab denim shirt from Levi's, which I was excited about. And then these little Roxy pants, these are, these were giving me Y2K vibes. So I went ahead and grabbed them. I'm pretty sure I had a similar pair of these when I was in high school. Why do they have a weird zipper? You guys, what is this? What is happening here? Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, these are Roxy pants, okay? And they just look like normal pants, okay? They have a low rise, whatever. But look, the zip, the pocket is where the zipper is. So if you had something in this pocket, you could unzipper it? Look at, why is it like that? See, why? Why do you put your pants on like that? And then your pocket has a hole. I don't know. I really don't. Welcome to my life as a reseller. So anyway, I got these Roxy pants. Um, I was gonna just sell them locally because they are really cool. They have a really cool cut. And apparently you can enter them through the pocket. Who knows? <laughs> so Lila, my daughter, she has a little hole. Um, some other things in here. Oh, definitely taking this to the local spot. This is just a little lace front, like tie dye shirt. Definitely something that has that Y2K vibe look to it. So take that to the local spot, put like $15 on it. This, I will probably, I might keep this. This is a Bravido shirt, I believe. This is a Rolling Stones little band shirt and a Velvet Underground. Andy Warhol band shirt. These aren't old. These are definitely repros, but they're still cool to layer. Get that like Annie Bing vibe going on. Anita Bing, right? That's, that's how you say that, Anita Bing. <laughs> uh, we have a little pair of Madewell shorts, size extra extra small. There we go, just a little pair of black pull-on shorts. These are, I think they're pretty current, let's see. Uh, 2018, not that current, but those are pretty classic. And a pair of Athleta leggings in a size large. They are capris with a little lattice lace up there. So that's kind of like all the dark colored items that I have. Um, it wasn't a bad day. It was a long day. I didn't get a lot of stuff for the amount of time that I was there, but that happens. It's not the end of the world. Okay, let's finish processing this. Put these white things into the washing machine now that they have been soaked and go back downstairs 
with all of this stuff and get it ready to either be listed on Poshmark, go to the local uh, store that I sell at, and I will walk you through some of that. And then we'll do some shipping. Hi, it's me, Editing Nicole. I wanted to throw in a couple comments about this. I filmed this video a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to say those little Madewell shorts, the extra extra smalls, sold for $28 locally, and those Roxy pants with the weird zipper sold for $20. So don't discount trying to sell your items locally. Look into it. You might be able to find a shop near you and make some extra money. I did really great last month doing that. Okay, continue. Enjoy. Here's my sad little stack of items for today. We have this Madewell pair of jeans and these sold for $29. I picked them up at the bins. $21.48 was my earnings after fees. Next up are these two bras. So these I also picked up at the bins. We have a Notori bra and a Walco bra. I just listed this. This one sold really fast. Um, they sold in a bundle together for $30 and I made $22.28 on those. The next item is this Cleo Harper sports bra. I never heard of this brand. This sold incredibly fast for $25 and I made $18.28 after fees. And then let's see the last item here is this Nike Big Kids Tech Fleece hoodie. It sold for $16 and I made $11. So this one is in mint condition, amazing condition. So that's great. So those are the four items that sold in the last few hours. Um, two of them sold today, two of them sold overnight and I'm going to get them boxed up. A uh, few people were asking me about the box codes on these. I know I'm really bad about sharing. There we go. Hopefully this information will help you. Box are you? Box four? I don't know. I don't know. Um, they're just little square boxes and the Tyvek Mellers. Okay, back to processing stuff. I have hung up all of the stuff I'm going to list from the haul over here. I need to steam a few things, but I thought while oh, it was steaming, we'd have a little chat. So some psycho bunny pajama pants. These are great. Um, there's a ton of talk about Poshmark. I'm seeing like every YouTube video is like, I'm quitting Poshmark or should I quit Poshmark or what's the deal with Poshmark? My sales are bad on Poshmark. And I agree. My sales are not the best that they've ever been. Some of that is due to my output. Um, some of that is due to changes that Poshmark has made. Some of that is due to the economy. Some of that is due to people being afraid to spend money because inflation and war and, you know, there's so much happening that it is hard to pinpoint exactly why sales are down across the board. I do think that Poshmark, um, uh, I think Poshmark could do better in a lot of ways. And I, I don't really want to get into that, you guys. Like, I just don't want to have that debate. I don't feel like having that debate. I think that Poshmark could do better. And I wish they would. I wish they'd give us more data. They gave us some data. Thank you very much, Tracy Sun, for that. Um, I knew that one was coming. And I appreciate the data they did give us, but they're still missing a lot of data. So if we could get things like how many views did our listing get, I think it would make a big difference in comforting us and us being able to track if things are changing because of Poshmark or because of something else. Like I, every other platform tells me, pa, Macari, eBay, they tell me how many views an item has gotten. Poshmark doesn't tell me that. So I don't know if no one has seen it. I don't know if it's my listing. I don't know if it's their algorithm. I just think that if we could have that information, it would make a huge difference. Look at this vintage JCPenney gown. Yes, someone needs this for prom. Um, so yeah, I think that that's like a big part of it is, you know, we need more data. We need more information. You're making big changes within the search, which I understand has to happen. I understand the business reasons why it's happening. I just think that it'd be awesome if you could let us know what the heck is going on. Uh, am I going to quit Poshmark? No. Am I going to suggest that other people quit Poshmark? Absolutely not. No. 
what we are going to do is, um, you know, say, yes, things are hard. Things are a struggle. What can we do right now in order to move our business forward? And the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is a do what works for you. Some things that work for me aren't going to work for you. Some things that work for me or for you aren't going to work for me. I think that having multiple streams of income is really important. Like I'm not just selling online anymore. I'm also selling locally. I am, you know, I have multiple streams of income and that's really helpful. And I'm not just talking about cross listing you guys. I am not talking about, Hey, I am picking up the same clothes and I'm listing them on five sites. And now I have five streams of income. No, I'm talking about, what are you good at? Maybe you are good at graphic design. Can you do some Fiverr work when it's slow, right? Like, because I think that sales for people aren't just down on Poshmark, they're kind of down across the board. I think, again, our economy is part of that. And so what other gig, you know, e-commerce thing can you do to start having an additional stream of income? Can you make YouTube videos? Not everyone can. I really believe that not everyone can make YouTube videos and that's okay, but can you make YouTube videos? Do you have things to add to the conversation? Can you, um, there's just like so many options. Are you crafty? Can you craft something? Can you sell it on Etsy? Can you sell it at a local mart? You know, there's a lot of local pop-ups that happen. Um, I think selling locally is going to be a big key during this time. So if you have an opportunity to sell to buy, sell trade stores, if you have an opportunity to sell in a local spot like I'm doing on consignment, like think about all your options that are out there and then add to your e-commerce reselling business. There we go. Free people, a little blouse. That's cute. So I think that, um, yes, things are changing. Things are hard. How are we going to fix this? We don't have control over the platform. We can't change what's happening at Poshmark, but what we can do is change where we put our energy and time into. And maybe if you haven't sold on eBay, if you haven't sold on Macari, now is maybe the time to start doing that. Maybe you start doing Facebook marketplace and, you know, doing local stuff. Maybe you start driving for Uber. I don't know. I just think that um, right now is really the time to utilize as many opportunities as you can. And that isn't just reselling. It's more competitive now. Like there's a lot more people doing it. So what are people, what do people need? Are you good at your bookkeeping? Could you do some Fiverr work? Could you, you know, take a bookkeeping course and learn how to be someone's bookkeeper? Like there's so many options for stay at home, like gig economy work. And I think right now it's not a bad time to pick that up if you're able to and you're struggling with reselling. Now, don't forget, you still have to give some time to reselling. So set, you know, set aside time block wisely. If you get into other gig economy work, remember to don't spread yourself too thin, um, but make it work. So like, I know that this local shop that I'm selling at, I'm doing good at it so far, I'm making money. And um, I have to set aside time every week for that. I have to set aside time for sourcing enough pieces. I have to set aside time for cleaning and prepping and driving the items to the store. I have to do a lot of, you know, work for that. It's adding in another 10 hours into my week just to do this local project. And I have to take that into account with my Poshmark business, how much time it's taking away from my Poshmark business and what that all looks like. That's all. There we go. This is just a Vince Camuto, which I wouldn't normally pick up, but this was 100% linen. So I grabbed it. My husband's home. Fear back. This is a really pretty April Cornell dress that I picked up. Look at how gorgeous this is. Look at this. Love these. I'm going to keep prepping and talking to you guys. So that's all. I think that now is just the time to expand in any way you can, but I don't think it's the time to give up or stop working or, you know, stop putting in the time. I'm still doing okay. Um, I have drastically lowered my cost of goods by just sourcing at the bins. I'm not paying up for anything right now. And 
I think that that's good advice. Right now is not really the time to be spending a lot of money if you're not making the money or you don't have a cash reserve to spend on inventory. Um, I do think that people will start selling inventory off very inexpensively. And so it might be, you know, a time to buy inventory from other resellers. I know my friend actually just did a huge buyout um, of someone who was closing their reselling business and she got a killer deal on everything. And luckily she had the capital to be able to do that buyout. Um, so if you have the capital, start looking for people who might be doing, who might be selling off inventory, look for other opportunities. That's all. Um, but I think overall we're going to be okay. We've been through this before. There's been ups and downs. I've been a full-time reseller now for seven, eight years going on. And I can tell you there's been waves, really good time periods, not so good time periods. When I was selling uh, full-time on eBay, there was eBay changes would happen and it would be scary and it would, you know, impact my sales and I would overcome it. And I think we'll all overcome this too. So I'm not quitting eBay. I am not, um, <laughs> giving up my source of income there, but I have multiple streams of income and the best piece of advice that I can continue to give you guys is to have multiple streams of income and don't discount on your reselling income. If you can count on multiple things, you're going to sleep better at night. And you know, that can, there's so many options out there at this point. Um, we live in this really beautiful age of time where oh my gosh the option the just like unlimited options if you're a good artist you can start making art my friend coco color resells recently got into the rug making business and she's making these beautiful rugs and doing great with it so don't be afraid to step outside of reselling and look for other ways to supplement yourself while we get through this I think we're all going to be okay, though. I hope that hope that makes sense. Anyway, in other news, today, while I was at the bins, I ran into, um, I'd never met her before, I'd never seen her channel, but she came up and introduced herself. Her name is Dumpster Diva. Does anyone watch her channel? Um, and then I saw her on, Robin, I saw her on YouTube. I came home and I was like, Dumpster Diva, who is that? I looked her up. She's got a great YouTube channel, big following, sources at the same bins as me. And yeah, so that was nice. Met a little local reseller and she doesn't sell clothing. She sells like mostly hard goods. So that's the other thing is if you're primarily a clothing reseller, maybe now is the time to branch into things like hard goods, replacement parts, um, toys, children's stuff. People will buy for their kids before they'll buy for themselves during hard times. Definitely selling a lot of children's clothes. Um, I'm selling a lot of basic necessities like bras. You guys know I'm really into bras. Bras are flying off the shelves. I actually, I actually looked and I've sold over $10,000 worth of bras in the past 12 months. Um, in the month of April, we're only like halfway through. I've already done $1,000 on just bras. On just bras, you guys. So uh, I think people, you know, you, if you need a bra, you need a bra. <laughs> people are more willing to spend money on needs versus wants. And that's just something to really keep in mind right now with the times changing and inflation and all of that good stuff. Oh, it's wild out there, isn't it? This jacket's really cool. I need to take some time and get the steam. It's really good. Look how cool this jacket is. It's got big lips on the back. It's brand new with tags, so I didn't wash it, but it's all wrinkled. And I want to get all of these wrinklies out so I can take a really good photo of it. Everything is pretty processed now. So these are the items that I'm going to be photographing. I've already hung them up. I've put their little tabs on, their inventory numbers, and that's kind of the stuff that I'm keeping. And then I also have the stuff down here that needs to be flat laid. This again is all yesterday's haul. I also got this like cute tote because I needed something to put my stuff in. Lots of kid stuff in here. We've got like Oshkosh overalls, this cutie Oshkosh vintage shirt. I guess I am selling some vintage 
kid stuff now, you guys. I got some bras, you know, the typical stuff. This was yesterday, and I did um, 65 pounds. I spent $83. And let me show you the stuff that's going to go to the local shop. So that stuff comes in here and I actually hang it up here and I kind of prep it and make sure that it's all ready to go, clean, it needs to be steamed, um, and then I tag it and bag it. But there's a couple really special things that I wanted to show you guys. Let me grab them. Believe it or not, these two items are worth $100 a piece. I know, absolutely crazy. So this first item, I grabbed it because I just thought it was so cute. It's a vintage little kid dress. It's got all this great detail. Uh, the tag is like really folded up in there, but this is a vintage Shirley Temple dress. <laughs> and I think it's a repop um, probably from the 80s or 90s, but that was really exciting. I talked to my friend who does kid stuff, and I think I'll probably list this one around $100 tag is like really hard to get out of there um and then this okay let's talk about this skirt because this guy is <laughs> i grabbed this to take to a local shop and then i looked it up and selling for like 70 to 90 dollars <laughs> and that's just wild to me i got it because it's just like a micro mini skirt it is just an abercrombie skirt you guys i'm gonna do a couple screenshots and show you guys like the solds on these things but yeah i um i think that i will probably now list this in my poshmark closet for 75 to 90 dollars how wild is that how wild is that it's very short as you can see there's my hand very short <laughs> editing nicole is back okay here's the deal with that skirt i sold it for 42 dollars I sold it at the very end of the month when I was doing a huge push to try and hit my $10,000 goal. Someone sent me a $42 offer and I'm not going to say no to that. I'm not going to. But if you do look at solds on that skirt, it is selling for much more. So if you're willing to hold out or you have the right closet for it, I do think you could get about $90 to $100 for it. I stand by that. Just because something just because you can get that much for it doesn't mean I hold out for it. Okay, that's all. That's all. This is a little Ralph Lauren. The brand doesn't even matter. It's just like a cool v-neck, like bright orange polo. All of this I got based on style. And even if I wasn't taking this to the shop I sell at, I could take it to like Plato's Closet or Buffalo Exchange if you have one of those locally. This is just a plaid wrap dress with the spaghetti straps. These are these jeans, which are really popular. What is this called? Like a patchwork type of jean. And both of these are just sheen, but I'm not upset about selling sheen secondhand. I feel like it needs to not just go straight to a landfill. I'm going to clean this up, like clean up the edges a little bit, but these are really cute. Those should do really well. This is just a little plaid mini skirt. Speedo, vintage Speedo boxer, or a boxer, swim trunks. A couple of pairs, Citizen for Humanity, but notice how low that rise is. Like, that is a very low rise, so I'm looking for things like that. Low rise flares, there's another pair. These are just straight leg garage denim jeans. Another pair of very Y2K flare jeans. Madewell high rise skinnies. These are a small size too, and I find that small size does really well locally. Hollister Y2K denim jeans. Look at these things. That rise is so small. <laughs> and then we have the free people overall shorts, which should be great. And then we have a bunch of just like random shorts that I'm taking in over there too, because it is the season. So we have a great rack going on right here. I'm excited to get those over to the local spot and hopefully make a little bit of money. We can talk about this rack too. This is a rack that I've already photographed and started to list on Poshmark. And so I hang it here until it's listed and then I fold it up and I put it into the inventory system. But these are the in process items. So once I take photographs of these, they get moved here. I have to fold these up first. And then um, I don't inventory them until I list them in case I need to get more information. Okay, uh, here, that's old stuff, but 
This is a, this is my favorite piece, I think, from yesterday. This is a BDG, which is Urban Outfitters. This is a shacket, but it's like a quilted, insulated shacket. It is so cool. I kind of want to keep it, but I know I won't wear it enough. Psycho Bunny pajama pants. Fabletics Sherpa half zip. Half zips are super popular right now. This amazing JCPenney's vintage, perfect little prom dress. Very excited for that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm probably going to list this at like whoop, $75. Okay. Uh, free people blouse. Vince Camuto, 100% linen, white top, perfect for summer. And April Cornell, the lighting is so bad. I'm sorry. April Cornell, look at this cute print. Little blue roses, size large. That is in perfect condition. This little jumpsuit, this is just um, like a fun to fun. It's a little monocloth sometimes, but I just really thought this jumpsuit was so fun with those wide legs. Very flattering. Someone threw this to me, a very nice girl who I don't know who she is, um, but she was like, hey, I don't sell men's stuff. Do you want this? And this is just a Ted Baker sweater, like blazer. It's really cute. And a size five, which is like an extra large. This is a great brand, Planet. And this is just a little button down shirt dress. This is this crazy thing that you guys saw with the lips on the back. Uh, American Eagle mom jeans that are heavily distressed silver jeans with the thick stitching on them. We'll see how those do. I haven't sold silver jeans in a long time. Abercrombie & Fitch skinny jeans with the button fly. 505 straight from Levi's in a size 12. I don't always pick up everything with that Levi's tag, but I liked these and they were a good size. AG, the graduate men's pants. American Eagle pants, this vintage Nike hooded fleece kangaroo pocket. There is the, this is like a very 90s Y2K tag. This is a free people with the cool sweater sleeves, the Twilight. I always put Twilight and Bella Swan in the listing when I'm listing things like this. Levi's shirt, jacket, jacket. These pants I showed you guys. I showed you this, but let's talk about it again. I'm going to put Garth Brooks When the Thunder Rolls in the listing for this bad boy. Because doesn't it just remind you of that song? Look at There is, you know, When the Thunder Rolls and the Lightning Strikes. You know. If you know, you know. Okay. <laughs> this uh, repop of the Velvet Underground shirt. The Rolling Stones. Smart wool. I showed you guys these already. Um, this is a Hatch maternity blouse, which is a really popular. There we go. This says, what does that say? The Nines by Hatch. I don't know. That must be a collaboration, maybe. I don't know. But it's a maternity shirt. Lilla P open front cardigan. This is sold at Nordstrom's. A Smashing Pumpkins ringer t shirt. A little pair of J. Crew fleece shorts, mini Bowden pants that are fully lined. You always want to make sure that you put that in the description. And then these like neon pink true religion jeans um, that should do well. So that's kind of my whole haul from yesterday. It wasn't like a, a crazy amount of stuff. I was there for a very long time, but I am happy with what I got. And then I got like, you know, like I said, a ton of kid stuff all of that. And now I have to go start processing today's haul. <laughs> We're going to do this haul in the very old fashioned sit on the ground and show you what I got really fast. Uh, 26 pounds, 33.80 is what I spent on this bag of goodies. We're going to sort it really fast. Um, so this relic bag, which I showed you, someone had thrown this back and I thought it was just so cute. So it can be a crossbody, it can be um, a handle, and even the handle has like really pretty detailing on it. So that was really fun and it's in great, like perfect condition. So at least that was set on Poshmark probably for like $30. And then I did get lots of pants today. Let's see, jeans. 
We have a pair of Hudson flap pocket jeans. I do sell these for in that $30 range. These are a size 29 and they're the signature boot cut. So I'll probably price these at like 35. A pair, okay, I saw these selling on Depop. I was like lurking Depop trying to figure all this out. These are the A pocket buy seven for all mankind. And these used to be the jam back in the day. I saw people selling them for 35. So I'm going to try and sell these for 35 too. This is just a little John Galt, which is Brandy Melville, little Y2K style shirt. I'm gonna take this to the local shop. A little Victoria's Secret slip. Someone will definitely wear this as like a slip dress. Very cute. I'll sell that locally. We have these. Oh, I just sold a pair of these in maroon. Actually, these are the um, Nike dry fit. They are joggers. They're the fleece like line joggers. So cozy and soft. So those should do pretty good. I think I sold my last pair around $30. Pair of jeans from Topshop. These are the Topshop mom jeans in a size 30. Really cute wash on these ones. I'm gonna take these to the local shop because like I said, my last Top Shop jeans sold for $40. We love that. A little cropped blouse. Look at this glitter. Um, of that I'm just gonna sell locally. That's nothing like too special there. Another spot thing I'm gonna sell locally is this hot mod bodycon little corset. Or like, I don't know what this is called, corset style dress. But this should sell locally probably in that $20 range. So that's really cute. I thought that was adorable, personally. This is a little white dress from um, Urban Outfitters, I believe. This is old though. This is staring at stars. That's a very old tag, but I thought, how cute is this? So this is just a white lacy dress. I thought this would be perfect, like bridal shower, bridal, even like a beach wedding. Honestly, this would be a perfect little dress. It's really pretty, perfect condition. So I will list that on Poshmark. Jeans, um, Levi's 7-Eleven skinny jeans. And sexy boyfriend jeans from Gap. I just like the cut of these with, and they were brand new. They still have the sticker on them, like the size sticker on them. And I think that, you know, Gap jeans, I can get about $20, $25 for. So that works for me. Look at this. So I was, when I was looking at Depop, I was seeing that these like tie back shirts sell for good money, especially if they're like blingy. Um, this one is not blingy, but it does have fake uh, leopard fur on it, which was all the rage, <laughs> all the rage. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm either going to sell it locally or put it on Depop, but I would, if I put this on Depop, I'm probably going to list it for like 35 to $50. So this is good. If you see shirts with no backs, look into them. Ugh, this exact fake leopard fur. I had like a purse made out of it. Love that. Me again, I know, hi. This is why you don't wait so long in between filming and uploading that shirt I just showed you. I sold locally for $35. And I sold a pair of the Sheen patchwork pants for 20 locally. I mean, the local stuff I am loving, absolutely loving. And then we have a little dress from Cloth and Stone and it's just a little spaghetti strap high neck gray like chom chambray dress that sold at um anthropology these little micro shorts micro booty shorts from american eagle these are definitely older look at how tiny they are again my face is longer than my shorts Sell those locally, I'm sure. Um, oh gosh, these are another Depop special, as you will see. Look at this Mickey and Friends short alls, you guys. Mickey and Friends short alls. We love these. I will probably list these for $40 to $50. No joke. Yes, 
love that. I keep talking about the local stuff, but I sold those Vinky overalls for $38. I do pay 20% fee on it, but I really want you guys to know that there are so many options out there for reselling. Don't get stuck in a rut. I sold 90 items last month at the local shop. That's great. I'm going to keep these for myself. This is the Nike Yoga. So you see the Nike symbol and it's like sideways like that. That's their yoga line and it's so soft. I was really pumped when I found these. Um, so these are size large, which is my size and they're just little leggings. And again, it feels like that like soft align type of fabric. If I was going to list those, I would list them for like $30. Um, zipper needs to be played with a little bit on this, but this is a Lululemon scuba hoodie or not hoodie. It's like a scuba sweatshirt. It doesn't have a hood, but it's like a quilted, really pretty purple little Lululemon sweatshirts. So I thought that was cute. I will definitely list that on Poshmark. These I'm going to attempt to wash up and sell locally. These are vintage carpenter jeans from Gap. Look at that. Carpenter jeans are definitely on trend right now. Um, they are kind of dirty and worn in, but I think I can wash out some of the spots. And if not, some of the spots just give it like more love and people like it. So let's see what we do with those. We have a pair of 721 high rise skinny and they are the Levi premium. So hopefully I can sell these for $35 to $40. A little tank to sell locally, a little spaghetti strap tank with the gathered bottom from Lucky Brand. That's definitely an older Lucky Brand tag. Vintage baby dress, these like fluffy dresses do really well you guys my handful of bras which i will get to we love a handful of bras um a theory a men's theory white polo shirt and an extra extra large a pair of overalls which i'm gonna sell locally these are just dollhouse uh, in a size 28. Overalls are selling really well at the store. We have these, which are going to be selling locally, or I'd put them on Depop. These are Billabong. We'll get those cut off lace up shorts, you guys. Yes, these will do really well. These will sell fast, I'm sure. A pair of Abercrombie skinny jeans. More shorts, um, American Eagle shorts and blank NYC cutoff shorts. I definitely need to do a big short photo haul and get some shorts listed in the shot in the um, Poshmark closet. And then Abercrombie Kids um, denim jeans. I think my daughter will want these. And if she doesn't, I will put them into the winter kids consignment unit. Then I have this Chaser Unicorn. <laughs> like drop waist tunic to sell on Poshmark and I got a bunch of Hannah Anderson stuff so we have a little pair of Hannah Anderson PJs and then these three dresses are all the same size they're all a size 100 so they're little play dresses by Hannah Anderson so one two three and I will lot these up together. I'll put them as a lot probably for $25 for all three of them and they retail for like $40 a piece so that's a great deal for someone. Last but not least my very favorite part. Oh wait no I also got this. I got this Tweety Bird vintage Tweety Bird nylon tote bag. Hello from Looney Tunes Warner Brothers. Yes. Okay, the bras, the bras. So I got a whole handful. I think there's about 20 here. I'm not gonna show you every single one. That they were definitely all together, like still like stacked up some of them. And um, I believe they're all about the same size. Let's see. Um, so Freya, we love finding Freya bras. That's a great brand, 30F. 
And then I think these are all Chantel bras. Look at this. So there's that. And again, I am going to do a bra video. I think I'm going to film it tomorrow. So I will have a bra video up soon. And yeah, these are all about the same size, 32, triple D, all the same size. So I'll probably lot some of these up. But yeah, I'm just so happy I found all these bras. You should have seen me. I was like, oh, what? No way. Uh, more Freya bra. Are you the same size? 30F. Yeah, so definitely have like these two. I will put together in a lot. These two bras. And this one, I believe, is the same too. This little polka dotty one. We have more Chantelly. This bra sells well for me. I've sold this bra before so freaking pretty this one is a 32 triple d so you get the point and then here's the same bra so i have it in blue and black so i will definitely be lotting these two up um and then this is a walco sports bra walco sports bras do really good and another little chantilly mm, freya form i don't know Anyways, lots of bras, lots of great stuff. I was excited about today's haul. I feel really positive about it. For such a, I was only in there for about an hour and I walked out with about 25 pounds and some of the stuff is really great. Uh, the bras alone should get me about $500. That's not bad. So I'm gonna get to work taking photos of these. I did have a couple more things uh, sell while I was filming with you guys. So I'm gonna pack those up and ship them and then we'll wrap up the video for the day. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Okay, I'm just going to show you these last three things. A bunch of solds actually came in, but this is a brand new Tags Massimo Duty scarf. This one sold for $32. I picked this one up at the bin, so that's great. And I made $22.92 after fees. These are Topshop Moto Jamie jeans in white. They sold for $16. I made $10.12 on those after fees. And then the last one here is this Piranha Summit Pants in black. I sold these for $38 from the bins. That's fantastic. My Piranha Climbing Pants have been flying out the shelf or out of the store. Um, so $38 and I made $26.68 after fees. So that's the end of the day, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be back soon with a brand new video.